Modeling of language syntax and semantics The case of the assembler compiler Since the focus today will be on migration of legacy software, let's spend some time making you a bit comfortable about this topic. Let's suppose you are migrating from a mainframe, like this, uh, what you see in a museum, or like this, a very fancy one, into .NET or .NET Core. That's what we as Raincode Labs are doing quite, uh, quite often. You can talk to a customer that may say that, for instance, they have 100 million lines of code in COBOL. That's quite a lot, but that's fine. We have a Raincode COBOL compiler. They can just download it and try it even themselves. They can also say, well, in addition to that, we also have 10 million lines of PL1. PL1 is also a very big and legacy uh, programming language, but luckily we also have a PL1 compiler. And then sometimes they can say, well, we actually also have 5,000 lines of assembler. And usually that would have been a showstopper. That assembler needs to be transformed somewhere or rewritten or something needs to happen to it before we can migrate. And that just adds another level of uh, complexity into a migration, which is already a very complex process. So that's how we several years ago embarked on a journey to make an assembler compiler. In the world of legacy migration, there are certain things that should be expected and they were definitely part of this project. First of all, you are dealing with legacy. So when was the last time in your fancy modeling languages you were dealing with line continuations? Right? Line continuations happen when a developer writes a line so long that it doesn't fit on one punch card. So you need to go extra length in order to be able to designate the second punch card to somehow join the previous one. We don't have punch cards anymore, but these design choices are there. You have some customers that are afraid to touch a particular parts of uh, their code bases. Performance is always an issue because this is an assembler level uh, program. So uh, even if it's a self-modifying program with a lot of things that should have never been possible, it still needs to operate very fast. The design is non-orthogonal, so by uh, knowing everything about addition and subtraction, you learn absolutely nothing about uh, multiplication. And there are some legal issues like the inability to produce sellable artifacts automatically from the uh, documentation. The sketch of the process, how I wanted it to go, is I take this principle of operation that describes the instruction set of 952 uh, instructions, and then I make a nice compiler out of it uh, somehow. This paper is mostly, you know, how this somehow uh, came into, uh, you know, having several models, meta models, languages, and, and whatnot. So instructions are defined approximately like this. So there are some nice uh, things to see here. So the ICM, ICMY, ICMH, these are uh, short versions of insert character on the mask, which is the real name of an, uh, of an instruction, and they are mnemonics. Then you have arguments, which have a different order in how the programmer writes them, in how they are laid out in memory, or in how they are called conceptually. So if you read a text that says the second argument, that refers to number two here, which is the third one and the fourth one uh, that, uh, that the programmer writes. Then you have the format, which is a very nice uh, thing because uh, that's how you know that the second and the third uh, variant of ICM look very similar to uh, each other, but very dissimilar to the first variant. And then you have some constants that will let you generate some code. So in general, there were some very nice tables that I could use. There were some uh, tables about instructions, ta tables about setting some magic numbers like condition code and so forth. And there was a lot of just text, a text that you need to read, process with your own mind and then make a model. So the emulator, the code, this is an actual screenshot uh, made a few minutes ago from the Visual Studio. The code is generated, but let's go through it. So it has some uh, constants that came from, uh, you know, the 
the code of uh, the, this particular variant of ICM. It knows, because it knows from the format how long the instruction is, so it knows how many bytes do we need to uh, fetch from the memory. It knows what kind of things get, get there, so we not only take the first register, we also read the current value of that register. And we don't always uh, don't only have the base and displacement, but we form a right address, but we don't read from that address because we are not interested in reading from. And then we have some semantic uh, actions that actually do something with these values and registers and, and whatnot. So there is a part uh, about syntax, there is a part about semantics, and they influence each other in order to generate this nice code. So in general, I've taken this principles of operation uh, PDF, and first of all, I created models for formats. Right? There were 60 different uh, formats, and each of those formats represent a, an entire family of instructions and how they are being dealt with. Then there are condition code models. There are 88 different condition codes, raising a special flag if the result is negative or has an overflow or something like this. Then I had to create bitness models, so explicitly go through all of them and say, okay, the first uh, argument is a 32 bits unsigned something that needs to be read. The bitness and the, this magic table of instructions and the format together can form a proper instruction syntax model of each of the instructions. And then I had to write the emulator uh, steps for the, uh, for the semantic uh, model, and they form the emulator. Emulator forms the part of a runtime, runtime forms the part of a compiler. Usually when a compiler compiles something, it's not really by the book compilation of you take a text and you produce bytes. These bytes, in order to run, they need something extra, like data types or whatnot, and these are usually called runtime, so we put the emulator over there. And then we also had some semantic steps for inlining, so like proper uh, compilation, and these form uh, one big model called the instruction set model, which is actually really preserved as a, well, we use a simple XML, and uh, it's just serialized, and that XML is used whenever the compiler is run. So at each act of compilation uses the model of the instruction set, which means on the premises of the customer can just take that XML file and tweak it there without rerunning all the model transformations here. And then there are some macros, but that's a very complex uh, story on, uh, on itself. So uh, the concluding remarks here is that, first of all, legacy is complicated and it will keep being complicated. Uh, then uh, if we do things by the book, by the book compilation doesn't work because self-modification, by the book interpretation doesn't work because it's not fast enough, right? So you need to compromise, you need to develop your own techniques. Semi-parsing, error tolerance, recovery and whatnot, these are techniques that are used to deal with whatever sources of information you have. They are unreliable at times, they are erroneous at times, they are sometimes just inaccessible. You infer conforming models and then you generate everything from them. That might be somewhat different than what you expect from people who are writing compilers. You may think that they just sit down and start punching uh, keys. That's not always uh, the case. Well, quite often it's it's not the case. So you need, uh, you need proper models and from these models you generate everything. And in this case, this is the only reason why this project ever succeeded. Because I would not have been able to write all the stuff that I uh, generate, thousands and thousands of lines of code, uh, without making uh, uh, mistakes. Model repair, uh, which means you know you have models that model the same thing from different perspectives, and you cross-check them and you infer some uh, some changes. Model refinement, when you infer whatever you can, and then you keep adding information from other sources or manually or whatever. And definitely model transformations; these are all uh, absolutely your friends. And I've been a big fan of, of domain-specific languages for uh, quite a long time, so definitely that's uh, uh, that's a good uh, thing. That's it. We're sort of done. I mean, we can we can extend and we can fix it, but it it is a product. It works. We succeeded. Whether we will succeed the next time, I don't know. Uh, the legacy is a big world. Thank you.